Hey everybody, welcome to Lessons with Troy, the podcast. I'm Troy Bruni Meyer. Well, in this episode, I'm featuring a recording of a Hawaiian steel guitar workshop I attended at this year's Maui Steel Guitar Festival. This workshop features three of some of the finest Hawaiian steel guitarists in the world, Greg Sardina, Patty Maxine, and Bobby Ngano. They talk all about how they got into the steel guitar, give advice to students, and around 30 minutes into it, play several tunes. Thanks again to Greg Sardina, Patty Maxine, and Bobby Ngano for putting on the workshop, and also to Alan Akaka, Addison Ching, and all the other fine folks that helped organize and put on the wonderful Maui Steel Guitar Festival this year. Enjoy the workshop. We were just talking about bars a little while ago, so, you know, there's so many different, different styles. I don't know if everybody's, you just use what you got, or there's a certain size that you like. Yeah. The length of it is one thing. I like them when they just make, you know, they just make the strings. Or, um, She had it. She said, "Oh, I have my own bar," and she's a tiny girl for 14. She came with a bar, like a pedal steel bar. Oh. I said, "Oh, oh God, she ain't gonna use that." That was the only thing I had. But I had one of these, oh. and so I gave her this, and even this for her hands looked too big. Oh. And I said, "You know, I got something for that. I had one of these. And it was perfect for her hands." So, yeah. yeah, I had one. And I didn't know what to do with it. No, you know. Right, Bobby? Yep, my, actually my first bar was a socket wrench. Because, <laughs> um, actually, Greg, Alan, Akaka, and Casey Olsen, um, three of them was my inspiration, one of my inspirations to play, because I, I used to watch TV programs, and I see each of them on a program, of my, my younger brother told me, you want to play still, you better get going with these young guys on TV. <laughs> so, I had no idea where the soul, it takes, I, I had no idea you have to use picks like this. You know, Did anybody to... put the picks this way when they first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody <laughs> taught me not to. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same thing too. Not like the Man, how does this work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, I had, I have, I had no clue of, where to go to get bars. So uh, I had a socket wrench. It, it worked fine in a guitar pick. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first year, that, and I had a I mean, standard guitar tuning because I had no idea it was steel guitar tuning. Wow, it's so, a good start. So I used to play all over and everything was slant. And these, oh, two, well, old, these two old timers at a, at a veteran home, you know, on um, all the way, they started clapping. So I thought, wow. I must be good. Yeah. And they came up to me and they told me the reason why we was clapping is because you got nuts. <laughs> he said, you're in standard tuning and you got, you got socket wrench and a guitar pick. So they told me, you got to go downtown to Zara's music. And that's where I found a bar, a pigs, and Jerry Bird in Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and this old, this old, this old Filipino guy showed me the C6. And, as soon as you got the tuning, I had the tuning, then you could figure out everything you're listening to. But before that, I used to think, wow, how great them do that, you know, on a standard tuning. <laughs> Since we talked about that too, um, Casey Olsen, maybe you know him, maybe you don't, maybe you never met him, but when I met him, I was just kind of on my way, just learning about the steel, getting familiar. And his grandfather is Billy Hill Lin, but he, he didn't want to play steel. He wanted to be a drummer. So like 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 Bobby was saying. Then he saw me, but back then I was just I was just coming out of the whole rock and roll thing too. I had the in fact I, I gotta since we talk it started, I'll tell you a little bit more after this. 
Anyway, I had the whole long hair thing coming in, looking like a rock and roller, and Casey was like, wow, this young guy, playing steel guitar. That's when he took interest, sort of like what Bob was saying. Yep. I don't know why I took interest. I, I knew um, Barney Isaacs. I used to hang around with his son. I never know the family was well known. I never know the Isaacs family was a well known Hawaiian music because I didn't pay attention to Hawaiian music. Then I went to the house and Barney's still guitar was laying there. I said, who well, plays that thing? You know, my dad, wow, his dad play music. You know, that's, that's how far it went. Can I do it just for a second? Remember, after live tonight, yes. we're going to do, do a jam session right on the stage. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Do you have the show tonight? Oh. Okay, we'll see ya. Mahalo. I'm not in here on the stage. So that's how I got interested in it. You know, I saw his dad was a, was a steel player. And I was playing guitar, so I kind of picked up on the slack key and I thought, well, this is pretty easy because that's when the whole Renaissance thing was started. Yeah. And I just got married, so I couldn't play and late anymore, so I had to change something around. <laughs> but I thought, no, that would be challenging. So challenging that I didn't know the harmonics were like how you play it. I thought, how to get that thing so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was like you, I was like, where is everything? But anyway, as, as I went along, then Casey got interested in steel guitar. So he was learning from his grandfather on the side before he went to, to Jerry Bird. You know, and so of course, Casey is where Casey today, he's just a monster player. Now talking about the bars, there's a couple of times when I forgot my bar. You know, then you gotta go borrow and you start getting real creative, you find all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I had this pellet gun in my house and then for some reason I was using it and then an empty cartridge I said, man. So I just sanded it down. Keep this in your car. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you have one, this thing works, you know, <laughs> it does what it's supposed to do. It might not be that bar, but if you got nothing else, these things will work. <laughs> keep this in my car. Around, but I tell you what though, if you gotta go to the airport, don't put this in your game bag. They took, they'll take it away. They took them away already. Luckily I, I knew I knew the guy, but you know I work at the airport and so I have to check my stuff in. So I, I went to the area where I play because I know all of them. So I went, yeah hey, just gonna check this in because I gotta head over to Hawaiian Air. Oh yeah great no problem you gonna play yeah I'll play that. They said I'm talking with the security guys who's a friend. And why is it taking too long? And this girl that I know, Linda, she's looking at the scanner. I'm like, oh my God, they're looking at this. I could have freaking, but I thought you guys was my friend. Yeah. Jeez, I don't have the pool to just like let this go. They actually took my instrument to the side and they brought it on and said, what is this? I said, you guys are too much. Obviously, it's you know, already been used and I use it as a, as a bar and song. But they did, luckily they didn't take it away, so they normally we would take this oh. away. So put it in your suitcase. But well, leave it in your car, you're not supposed to travel with this anyway. It's something that if you carry in your car in case you forget to bring your bar. So. Could I see how heavy it is? Oh, it's light. light. Oh, yeah. I've seen this. But you know, what's, you know what's really cool about this? Like if on an electric steel? Yeah. Because this is so light, it doesn't have a sustain, try it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll give you kind of a okay. tricone. Yeah, so it'll give you a little bit of a... Well, that, may I pick up then? Yeah. Pick it from there? With you can my use steel a lighter. Bar story? Yeah. You can and use a lighter, too. Hey, wait, you're blowing my story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've, I have uh, used many style steels. When I first started taking, I had the little flat Oahu bar. Remember those? Yeah. They're flat, look like a slice of bread cut off. Uh, so you can hold it. You know, these are not so easy. It takes a little learning to hold these, right? So I started with that. But I have left my bar at home, and I used a big lighter, which I just happened to have. And it gives the same kind of tone yeah. as that, because it's plastic, and it kind of cuts the tone off. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so. there's different lengths and different weights, and I've tried different ones, and I, I like the sound of that one. What kind of steel is that? This is a, it's a hand built steel. I just picked it up a week ago from a local builder that is a friend of mine who is a cabinet maker, builder, and a musician. So he's combined his two talents. And he told me he had a couple of pieces of koa wood, which he shouldn't have told me that. So I said, well, would you please build me another steel? And so he 
built this one. He built one, one for himself. Uh, and um, I think it's a lipstick pickup, he told me is on it. Um, and I have a friend who's an artist, a local artist in Santa Cruz, California, that hand painted the plumeria for me. So it's each one is lovingly painted on the oh, instrument and the front board. Yeah, I, I'm really liking it. We have some tweaking to do, which I'll do when I get back, but um, I'm really liking the sound and the feel of it. So if you ever do sell it, no guy's gonna buy it. No, that's true. Uh -huh. no, right. Way too sissy. I buy it. I'll give him a deal. I'm secure in my nest. Yeah. Yeah. And the, then I'll go back to how I started with with lap steel, and that is I I'm from Roanoke, Virginia, and uh, I had been playing a little ukulele and. I took dance lessons, I took a little piano, a little accordion, all these different things, and um, I asked my grandmother, who afforded me all these musical luxuries, if I could just learn to play the guitar so I could sing, Kumbaya, my lord, or something, something. So she took me down to the studio in Roanoke, and uh, the, the teacher and owner of the studio just happened to be a lap steel player. And his love was Hawaiian music. And uh, his name was Elmer Reidenauer and uh, Kimo. And he brought out a little wooden student model steel. And I didn't even know until he got close to me what it was really. And he, you know, and he turned it up and laid it on my lap like that and handed me that little flat steel bar and said, here, try this and see if you like it. And uh, he loved Hawaiian music, so that's how I really started playing, was with Hawaiian music. And he, as I recall, it was an open E tuning, which I think it's really relatable, because you know that E is open, and you know the third fret is G, and the fifth and seventh is B, and then C on the eighth fret. It's, uh, to me, it's logical. And uh, so that was my open tuning, and then I went to E7, and then I went to the C sharp minor because I already had the E7 in the bass thing. So that's tunings, but that's how I was blessed. I and mean, simultaneously, my, my grandmother was also a, a caterer, she owned a restaurant, and I would go down at nights and uh, hang out, kind of being babysat, I guess. And she had bought me a shortwave radio. Know anyone who's ever had a shortwave radio, but they're fabulous. You can just go all over the world with that radio. And I tuned in Hawaii calls. Oh, you know. <laughs> and so that same time, kind of same time, I was taking, going to take these lessons. So I felt a huge blessing for me. So that's how I started. How old were you? I was 14. Good question. And um, the way I started was, uh, I, heard, I heard steel guitar, the first steel guitar song I heard was 1959, you know, I'm from Lanai, right across you know, Lanai City. And, you know, being, um, I was stricken with polio, so I couldn't go play outside like the rest of the kids, so my ear would be always on the radio, listening to um, Bill Haley, you know, the old 50s rock. And one time I heard Sleepwalk, I said, wait, there's something different about this. And, and you know, when, when I moved to Honolulu, our family, and I actually seen people in Waikiki, there was steel players all over the place in the 50s. I said, wow, that's, that's too hard. And I kept on saying that all the way till I seen these guys on TV. I said, wow, young guy's playing. <clears throat> and um, this old timer told me, you look like you really want to play steel. I said, yeah, but it's too hard. So he said, you ever tried? I said, no. He said, they get going. <laughs> Try to pick it up, but, you know, and much like Greg, we had the long hair play, Jimi Hendrix, and, you know, all the old rock, yeah. And not thinking nothing of it, when I bought my first steel, and it was like learning to crawl again. First thing I said was, how did I get myself into this mess? <laughs> You know, it's, it's a really hard, it's the most challenging instrument I ever um, tried to play, but 
no matter how hard, how hard it is, that sound, that sound is so beautiful. You know, you, you don't give up, you just keep on. And during our time, we had record albums. So we put, you know, listen, take them off. And whenever you get frustrated, I would get, hold the needle down and, <laughs> and get another record. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, um, it's, 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 it's a hard instrument, but um, like anything in life is hard. But if you want it bad enough, you can you're gonna get it. But um, now, now, you know, at first, even Greg probably can tell you this, we practice every day, but you know, we want to sound like the old timers. But nowadays, I'm so lazy. <laughs> I just practice before, before my gig, which is a bad thing to do. But, you know. You're busy. Give yourself a break. Busy doing nothing. Ah, no, nothing. <laughs> But and my hair was short then, see, my hair's long now, so it should be changed. I had to, for me, I just practically just gave up guitar playing for about 10 years. And just you have to. Mm -hmm. and took it, but took it with me wherever I could sit in with guys and just strictly stay in the background, you know, just try to make it absorb what I could. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, all the uh, lessons and stuff. Of course, lessons are always good. But when you get out in the real world to, to sit in with people, it's the, the background fills and it's just knowing where the cards are. Like <laughs> he was teaching the cards. Those things are very valuable. You really need those more than you can probably pick your way through the melody and somebody sing it. You can figure it out. Well, that's what we do. If we don't know the song, chances are we're plucking around back there until we kind of got the right couple of notes because you know a solo is coming up. So, okay, you got the start. After that, as long as you can play a little bit of it, then the rest is by feel, yeah. you know. But uh, it's those important stuff, like if you were here with, uh, with this chord shots or uh, showing you where all the cards are on the neck, all the different positions. Mm -hmm. Those stuff is valuable. You know, that's the stuff you really want when you get out there and sit in. And I say sit in, go in and sit in, don't worry about it, you know. Uh, when you don't know how to play a certain song and you don't want to mess the group up, yeah, just lay back. When you feel like, hey, G, C, and D, I learned those chords. And then get in there and play it. Listen, I think listening too. Yeah, you know, listen, you've got to be First listen listening. and noodle and then jump in. Yeah. In fact, like Greg was saying, when he first started, if you bring your steel, I used to bring this, my, my steel to fish market where I work at. And just so happy Greg was working for Budweiser. Well, that's, that's how we met. That's how we met. You know, I had, I had my steel, I was practicing last time. Here comes Greg, rolling in the beer, I think. And then Greg said, oh, oh that's what mind? I play. Yeah. And then he goes, you don't mind, uh, I retune it. I said, go right ahead, man. So he tuned it to uh, B11, he started playing Sands. And I was above him, and my tape recorder was on. Oh my gosh! Yeah. That's how I learned sense wow. from this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used to bring it, like he said, you know, you're so into it, you bring it to work. You know, before work, before lunch, after lunch, whenever I had free time. You know, you got, you gotta, you gotta keep on going. But that's how we met. Yeah. <laughs> And I could tell when he was learning something new, you know, because I was actually, I learned on my own for a while. And then I, you know, took some lessons from Jerry. And so, was, you know, I learned a lot of stuff, you know, all the little tricks that Jerry had. This guy's a great, still playing by ear. And I, I know, and he was like, he said, man, his tape recorder is going. <laughs> and I did some stuff here, and I know he was like watching. <laughs> Somewhere else I heard him play, and I went, I heard the card, I went, that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> he was watching exactly <laughs> what I was doing. You, you know why? I actually, you know. Because he never played those before, and all of a sudden I hear him doing it. He was paying attention. Tape because, because yeah, really? a, lo a lot of people, they say, well, if you want to learn, you know, the whole time I said, the lessons are free, actually. Anybody, they used to, to tell me, anybody you see playing at any party, you see a steel player, pay attention. You know, old, old style is, you don't pay money, you pay attention. <laughs> you know, and 
That's why when he plays that, I thought, finally I learned that song. <laughs> <laughs> and tunings, how did you guys like, did, what did you start with, uh, like, like opens from slack key or? C6, they're great. You started yeah. with C6? Uh, well, like I said yes. too, when I saw the, when I first saw the steel, when I actually got into it, I was Barney Isaacs. You know, I didn't like grab one and try to figure out what it was. Right. The guy was right there. So and I just played around with his steel. Oh, and then you figured oh, out the tuning. What's the tuning? Yeah. Oh, C13. Oh, okay. And, and then it was he breaks steel. So I already knew right back, I mean, okay. right from the start, uh, to just tune it. Right. Yeah. When I was learning Western swing music, that's why I'm familiar with A6. I would listen to all these tunes, and I have a you know, little device where you can slow the song down, oh, yeah. but it stays in the same key. Handy item. Oh yeah. And I would just take small passages, and that's how I figured out of the, the most workable tuning for those tunes. So, because no one told me that. Just pick it up. Everybody has a it's, beginning. You know, yeah. Troy, he has his uh, on uh, YouTube lessons. I peeked in there once in a while. I'm sure he has a beginning. <laughs> They're great lessons, by the way. I really enjoy those. Thank you, Troy. Thank you. So if I don't, if you don't mind me asking, Joe, how did you get started on steel? Because you're a compass guitar player. What made you get going on steel? Um, about 27 years ago, Henry Allen did a series of, uh, called a class at the Maui, it was at Maui Community College that met for like six, eight Saturday mornings. And I, I know something just pushed me to do it. Yeah. I didn't know any really much about it. I love the sound. Yeah. You know, it's a sound, like Bobby said, you get attracted to the sound. Yeah. You know, so, and something just kind of just keeps bringing you back to it. Like, I you want to learn more and more. I didn't get it then. I mean, I, I dropped it. I mean, I never really didn't touch it. But I became friends with Henry Allen, and I helped him with some of his recording work at the studio here, and I helped him work on tracks for his book. Um, which eventually is what really got me going. And he never published his original book, um, but they have copies of it at the Lahaina Library because they didn't want to lose copyright problems with some of the material. But check it out, They're, it really, his tablature is really good. He, he kind of showed me the light of how to get the sound 20 some years later. I <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, another thing about the steel guitar, like, me and Greg always have this conversation, like, uh, a lot of people uh, frown on on us when we take the steel guitar other places like rock and roll, or, but you know, in reality, if music didn't fuse, you wouldn't have jazz, you wouldn't have singing. Greg was the first one to, to take the steel guitar to surf music, you know, and yeah, you, you're going to get a lot of uh, people criticizing, you know, I had, I had that a lot because I, I was a total blues player on guitar, so I would tune it, I found it, tune it to E, and you can play it, you know, like blues slide, and people used to say, I'm desecrating the steel, uh, <laughs> and, you know, whenever somebody criticizes, you tell them, Come and play. <laughs> no, really, because um, like Greg's latest CD, Stainless Steel. When I first, when I heard just one track from there, and it's it's rocking, you know. And people cannot um, comprehend when they when they hear like us guys playing um, um, like my Yellow Ginger Lay, and then the next song we play something by Jimi Hendrix. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's all good music. I always thought, you know, piano plays any any style. You can play Hawaiian, you can play rock, jazz. Every, so does the horn, so does the guitar, everything. Yeah. But the minute you pick up a steel guitar, oh, you only can play Hawaiian. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, why? I mean, every instrument can play any genre of music, but steel, we only can play Hawaiian? I said, I don't think so. You can play anything, you just, yeah. whatever you want to make it. You know, we're always going to play Hawaiian, but. If we get tangled up with some other guys and we want to join them, then hell, man, I'm going to whip out my little distortion, too. I mean, a good example is the cartoon SpongeBob, yeah? Steel guitar. Yeah, and all the kids. Now, one thing that cartoon did was turn on a lot of little kids to the steel. 
because I was at a festival in uh, Dayton, Ohio, so I was playing the steel, and all these kids was with their phone, mm -hmm. and calling their friends and, and video. <laughs> and then one kid asked me, what's your name? I said, Bob, you, you're SpongeBob. Oh. <laughs> You see, it's a good thing, you know. A lot of kids learn about the steel from that cartoon. Oh, that's so Who has that gig, by the way? I, don't know I forgot the guy's like name. Jeremy, um... No, that's not Jeremy Wakefield, is it? Yeah. It is it? Yeah. Who is it? Jeremy Wakefield. He's oh, yeah. On the, uh, oh, yeah. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. I just noticed his credit. He's on the credits. There that's may so be cool. other people, too. Wow. And a lot of kids yeah. found out about the steel. It was on the right. The credits at the end oh, of the cartoon. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a, I think it was a little bit of sleepwalk on uh, Better Call Saul. You guys know that program, yeah, Better yeah, Call Saul? Yeah. And I did not recognize a steel player, and I Googled it, and it was uh, uh, Brown, uh, what's his name? Junior. Junior Brown. <laughs> There's a really nice version of it, too. So, I mentioned you know. Senator Akaka, too, on that. There's a little thing, it's a whole Hawaiian theme, if you listen real close. Ah. They, they, yeah. Oh, is Alan in there? Uh, his his dad was like an old shot of his dad on, on C-SPAN, I think. Uh -huh. Right, Senator Akaka. And, you know, <laughs> so he's like, had a whole undertone of Hawaiian stuff going on. Yeah, there, so. yeah, yeah. Clever show. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. A question um, I have is, do you know anybody who's gotten really good without using picks that use the fingernails? Actually, I've, I've, I don't know anybody seen anybody like like this but I've seen a bunch of people on TV they play really well I think what's his name Brent Harper is one of those guys mm -hmm. and there's this other guy that I've been seeing on Cunningham I forget his first name he plays with little picks and that he's, he sounds great so there's a you know like there was, I remember Jerry just saying you can't you gotta do this and you gotta do that and I figured you know it's really what it comes down to is just your way and my way yeah because this I to see people play without picks, uh, they have a thumb pick. And I think there's one guy I've seen that play with no picks. It sounds really good. And But, you know, all the slants and holding your bar, it really helps. But I see people hold it really weird and the, the intonation sounds fine. So, so what's comfortable for you? Yeah. Yeah. Harmonics are challenging without a thumb pick, <laughs> if I might say. They're really challenging. Especially when you don't get enough sleep. <laughs> oh, <boy. Fashionable. laughs> But don't be afraid to put steel guitar with all kinds of music. You know. Somebody complained, said, I'm playing that you. <laughs> but you're always going to get uh, criticized for you know, doing something different. Yeah. As long as you still keep the old, you know, we still can play the old stuff. But like Gray said, you have to bring, bring them forward. You know, and there's a lot of old jazz standards that sound really sweet when you put them on steel guitar. Really, really nice. Yeah, I heard you playing last night in the jam session here with that steel. You talked about yesterday, last night. You got, just got that steel too. And I heard it last night, and that means it's sweet, that, that five pack. Oh, no, I had this a long time, but it's the oh. first time we're bringing it to Maui. Oh, right, right. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, just all old jazz standards. I mean, um, really, really nice on steel. You know, the, the the simple jazz standard, not not like the the jazz fusion. That's that's a little too much for me. <laughs> yeah, that's also what a lot of the that's where the Western swing players, you know, from Oklahoma and other parts of the country there, over the water over there. Uh, they were co accomplished jazz players. They just happened to play other instruments. You know, they played steel, they played banjo, they played accordion, all kinds of yeah. instruments. And the steel, uh, Bob Dunn was one of the first, I believe maybe the first uh, electric steel, correct? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And he has some licks that are slow down that and listen to that for a while. For me, I, I, that's how I learned them. And Joaquin Murphy. Oh, that guy is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy plays oh. like, like Pete Fountain on the clarinet. Yeah. 
That's how he plays on the steel. Eh? He, it's out of this world. Wow. Well, um, Leon McCullough and, and all these guys pick up a steel guitar because they heard Hawaiian steel. So, you know, we all get inspired by it. The whole world inspired by it. everybody, you know. Like, you know, you, you cannot say, um, oh, this, this culture music is um, no good. Every, every culture contributed to, to the music. That's why music is so, so, so many different kinds of music to it, but it's all good. Don't be afraid to, to um, bring it forward. Now, I wonder who's going to be the first one to play the steel in, in space. It's <laughs> 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 he, going to happen. You, <laughs> you have to bar for it. Okay? <laughs> Be sure and Skype it down, okay? <laughs> well, I don't know, could, should we just play something yeah. and see how we talk to each other? <laughs> Whatever you choose. Should what do you want to do? Something easy? Sleepwalk? What do you sleep on? Okay. See? Uh, just, just do the blues. Do the blues. Do yes. the blues. Cool blues? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can you do? In fact, this is the first guy I've seen playing hula blues at Royal and I. He keeps picking on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pay him to do that, though, did you? Hula blues. I'm the two for that one. Yeah.
try another song. Yeah. Uh, I picked one. <laughs> Oh, I'm thinking about which tuning I need oh, to go to. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Something slow and Yeah, sweet. yeah. Hit me love it, baby. Yeah, let's go yeah. here. <laughs>
challenging a little well, I'll just say that's challenging that if I'm in some other tuning then everything is laid out differently right so I'm like oh wait what key are we in first and then do I have to slant to go up there and so that, that I should have changed the tuning but it was challenging for me so that's that's good were you in a6 when this this one you no I was a c sharp minor seven because we did hula blues and that's the way, right, that's the way that I play. Yeah, so, uh, uh, <laughs> Get back to what I know. Yeah, I know. Well, you might have, you might have known a little difference, but it was fun. You're playing so softly and sweet. That helped. I can't help this thing is just loud. All right. Can't play, oh, no. can't play that way. <laughs> We all have our challenges, right? <laughs> Great. What, what kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of is that that you found on Facebook? Uh, Great. It's, it's a, um, it's a recording king, you know, the um, fashion after the old nationals. <laughs> so, it works nicely. It works good. Really so. That's cheap enough that if the airlines lose it, ain't that bad. Craigslist yeah, is a pickup, right? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. When I when I actually found this on Craigslist, I didn't see the pickup. Well, and then when I picked well, them up, with Jeff was yesterday last night. Yeah, no, oh, that's not. That's not old. Yeah, yeah. 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 This one wasn't really. Oh, because it was made for it. Oh, it's a round neck? Yeah, it's a no, round it's a square neck. neck, but I guess it was really low, yeah? Oh. So he said the sound, I said, because of the metal neck. Uh, you know, because yeah. yeah. you got to get the strings. Actually, my national is like that. My national, the string, yeah. the, the nut is really low. So you got to play it. You got to be careful that you hit it, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had a double mic last night, Jeff, and you really couldn't hear it. Yeah, it's, it's real quiet. Well, my partner Marilyn told me because we were under that uh, the cover, the tent yeah. thing. When I moved out right in front of Jeff, it definitely was a better sound. I mean, I could definitely hear it more. So it was a little muffled under there. I don't know where you were. Let's do Holly Ibu Hula. How's that go? You, 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 I still need to hear you. It's like a, like a swing stand with all the chords. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll sing it so we can just play it. Oh goody, yeah. oh yay. So just regular band. So what key is that? C. C.
um, the difference in the material, you know, the, the, the metal versus the wood versus the... On the bars, you mean? No, oh, the on, the, on the guitar. Well, like these, the these were, came out before. That was actually the first electric yeah. guitar. In fact, the first electric guitar that? ever. Yeah. Not It wasn't a regular guitar. These yeah. were the first electric guitar. But before that... But the prototype was wood, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. the Rick right. Bacher prototype right. was wood. And before that, they played a lot of old... This, like I said, this is new, but yeah. there's a remake of the old 1920s or 25, 25, where they used to play these. And they put speakers in there because they used to use the regular guitars. But they, they couldn't cut through, they couldn't get past the ukulele and the bass and everything, so they uh, came up with putting speakers in here. That's probably why it's, you know, uh, so loud. And then the problem, too, I found with having a pickup is I even if it's plugged into the PA system, I really hear just this. Because this thing is so loud and right yeah. in my ear yeah. that when it's plugged in the system, I can't, I can't tell. You don't need the pickup on that thing. Yeah. 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 So I have to usually tell the song, man, I need to hear that too, though. Because you know, so. it sounds really funny that the group is out here, but I hear only me. But well, as far as um, the warmest sound is the wood. Yeah. The advantage of this one is the termites can I get. Because <laughs> 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 I, I want steel guitars that, you know, was in the case for so long, they lift it up and the whole back. Has a whole family of termites. Oh yeah, yeah. Home record. But the wood is the warmest to Pat, is that instrument. is that hollow or is it? No, this is solid. solid. Yeah, it's solid. Mm -hmm. That is too, well. That has a hollow neck, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That neck is hollow. Yeah. Oh, pretty cool. You got legs on it. Got legs too. But Just you know, case. like whatever sounds sweetest to your ears. Play that guitar, yeah. And but there's some like the big lights, like the, the black version back then. Sounds really sweet, but you drop that thing and it, yeah, yeah and it just sh shatters. Oh, it's made with big lights. What did you say? Yeah, it's, it's made for the same material as the old bowling balls. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's nice guitar, but you drop it and so it's just. Here's the big light one. Yeah. I was going to say, I've got mine too, oh, which is Bakelite. Mm. And that's a steel. That's little. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a student model. Oh. It's brick and a lot of the old steels was, was shaped like a guitar. Oh. Uh, ukulele, yeah. mm -hmm. Generally, if the strings are raised up off the fret, neck, yeah. neck I mean, the fretboard, it's, it's a lap steel, generally yeah. speaking, yeah. right? There must be an exception to that rule, but, you know. That's it, the nut is raised. But like I say, whatever sounds sweetest to your ears, then you, you play that. And it doesn't have to be an expensive vintage instrument. There's some, some cheap ones that they sell now that sounds really nice. But some people, they have a habit of looking at it. hundred bucks out of it. It must be no good, but you got to try any steel guitar somebody sell it, just try it. Because you, you never know, it might be a dud, but it's sweet. You know, everybody looks at it and just pass, pass it by. It's not always, um, I played a frying pan like this one time in um, Joliet, Chicago. And this guy wanted me to play it in my show, and it was a real nice one. Too the yellow finish and everything, that lacquer, and it was the worst steel guitar I ever heard. And after one song, I said, you know what, this thing sounds terrible. He said, oh, I knew that, but now that you play it, I took a video, now I can sell it for more. Oh. <laughs> and, oh. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people like that. Oh, no. Yeah. So I said, fine, and I never spoke to the guy. <laughs> I never see them again, but what a thing to do, you know. Yeah, and, it, and it was a, it was much better condition than this, but it sounded horrible because in the old days, it was real inconsistent. Was hit and miss, you know. Like they would, they would make like ten of these, and only two would be really sounding good. So you had to try. Even nowadays, when you go into a 
shop, you have to try. Five steel guitars, and you don't try every one. But you're gonna just take the first one. You never know the next one. Is the best sound is the baby. You gotta go with the ears. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he sold it for a lot of money. In fact, you, I think you know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention. <laughs> That's okay. You'll get his. You'll get it back. Like the student model of the Rickenbacker, it's one of the sweetest sounding. But people pass it up because, oh, that's for kids, for students. But it's really sweet sounding. Like I said, never pass up any steel. If it doesn't have strings, then I can see it. <laughs> <pass it up. laughs> You guys have been great. Thank you. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. One more thing, you gotta have fun with music. It's a hard instrument, but you know, learn to have fun. Okay, because if you don't have fun, it's gonna be boring. <laughs> you know? And you learn it from the old timers too, yeah, they have all that sound effects. You know, that's one of the coolest things I like about the old timers. They're all serious when they're practicing. They get on stage, they just call ahead. You need that, that part to enjoy it. Music and life. Amen. <laughs> Thank you all. I was ready, I think. The universe chose me because of the two things that were happening, the radio thing and the music, the Hawaiian music, my teacher, that was what he loved. He, he taught me really well, and I just took to it. That's That was it. The technique, it takes some, take time. The technique yeah. does take time. But. Like, yeah, but like the reason for like being like see me just regular was when we, we was growing up, there was, you know, steel guitar was fading, was really fading. Yeah, this had right. a few players in right. so, yeah. you know, um, we, and the radio stations didn't play it anymore, but they was worried about the ratings, you know, yeah. so out with the old music. Right. But luckily we had the old timers who would be playing, you know, around town. So you're both Hawaiians? Oh, or no. Not really. What nationality are you, right? Hawaiian, Chinese, Portuguese, Irish. Everybody in Hawaii gets Chinese. Were you born here on the islands? Or? Yeah. Oh. My, my family is originally from Maui. Both my yeah. dad and mom is from Maui. And we all, we all um, what they call mixed in Hawaii, we call it, we all chop suey. <laughs> I'm uh, Chinese, Spanish, Filipino. Okay. Yeah, and um, like I said, anybody, anybody can pick up this deal. Well, it, it was um, tough for, like, Greg and I, we was full-on loud rock music. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess this appealed to me because I was losing my hearing. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah, but um, any way you look at it, it's a hard instrument to learn. Yeah. 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 But some ways, you know, take it to it more easy. Like, I guess... Um, my my teacher, uh, Pete Rogers, used to and, and, and hit my head because um, I learned that 26, yeah, and when you had, when you're like 26 years old, nobody can tell you nothing. <laughs> and he used to call me young punk, you know, and things like that. But I guess what made it hard for me was hard-headed kid. 
he had to always uh, lecture me and stuff. But it's all worth it, yeah, because, you know, some of us learn the hard way. <laughs> I, I had leakage awesome. every day from my, from my parents, but, but I wouldn't change that for nothing. That's the best teacher. Yeah, yeah, really. But any way you look at it, it's, 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 it's hard learning anything, any instrument. And don't, wouldn't you agree that the, the hardest instrument, harder than this to me, is violin. Because you don't have markers. So you you have to really have a, you know, a ear. But still, this is the hard part, you know. You know finding the notes is easy, but learning how to hold the bar, and like you said, the fix. I, I didn't want to have anything to do with picks like this and the whole bag told me that you're not going to be a steel player. Oh, when I first put on the picks, like Gray said, you put it the wrong way. And then when I would play it, it would fly. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of times the bar, you would slide it. <laughs> so always, what do we still get to always play when you're sober? <laughs> So when I thought I was good enough after three years, I started drinking and playing. Thinking, oh, it sounds good every night. And then somebody ran the tape recorder. They drink it. Because it sounded terrible. Old, but when you're all juiced up, everything sounds good. Yeah. So I'm really sober. <laughs> Thank you.